Israeli media is reporting that negotiations for a ceasefire deal with Hamas have stalled, with the Israeli government deciding against sending a delegation to the latest talks in Cairo. There had been hopes a deal could be in place by Ramadan after the White House said there was a framework agreement on the table for a six-week ceasefire. Al Jazeera's Hamda Salut has more now from occupied East Jerusalem. Negotiations around ceasefire talks have stalled. Israeli officials speaking anonymously to Israeli media have said that Israel decided against sending a delegation to Cairo, and that's because Hamas did not release a list of names of all of the captives who are still alive. This is something that came at the request of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who said that he needed this in order to move forward with these talks. However, Hamas has said that they're not willing to give up that kind of information until there is a finalized deal in place. But what the term finalized deal means is quite elusive at this point. Hamas, however, has said that their position remains the same, and they wanted to reiterate that, that they are looking for a permanent ceasefire, an end to the war. Whereas the Israelis have said, even if there is a six-week pause in the fighting, they are going to continue on with their military activities. Just on Sunday, Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, has said that under no circumstances will the war end until there is a total defeat of Hamas. Mediators are trying to bridge these gaps and bridge these sticking points to see what kind of concessions can be made by both sides in order to achieve a deal. But Netanyahu himself has said that even though there are discussions around a ceasefire, it doesn't mean we are anywhere closer to getting a deal. Hamda Salhout, Al Jazeera, occupied East Jerusalem. Well, Hamas, meanwhile, has clarified what it hopes to achieve from a pause in fighting before Ramadan. All the hopes of that happening have dimmed in recent days. A Hamas spokesperson said a top priority is allowing more humanitarian aid into the Strip. Hamas also wants Palestinians to be able to return to the northern part of Gaza. And finally, Hamas wants a complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza. Well, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris says Palestinians in Gaza are suffering a humanitarian catastrophe. She's called for an immediate ceasefire to secure the flow of aid and the release of the captives. And given the immense scale of suffering in Gaza, there must be an immediate ceasefire. Yeah. For at least the next six weeks, which is what is currently on the table. This will get the hostages out and get a significant amount of aid in. This would allow us to build something more enduring. So let's bring in Rami Khoury. He's a distinguished public policy fellow at the American University of Beirut and joins us live now from Boston. Rami, always good to have you with us. So look, Israeli media reporting that Israel won't be sending this delegation to Cairo. Is this just a negotiating tactic or does this now dash all hopes of a ceasefire deal before Ramadan? I'd say that it's dashed all hope before Ramadan. Ramadan is a March 10th, so there's another full week. Uh, but this is a, a kind of hardball, as they call it, in the United States. It's really tough uh, negotiating. And But the thing is, Netanyahu is negotiating with Hamas. He's also negotiating with the United States. And he's also negotiating with his partners in the uh, uh, temporary government, the war government, and one of whom, uh, Benny Gantz, is in Washington uh, having talks with American officials. And Netanyahu did not want him to go, but he went. So... Uh, there's a, this is a, you know, a six-dimensional negotiation, not just uh, Israel uh, and Hamas. But you have to really see the core issue as Israel wants some bottom-line gains. They want the hostages uh, released, and they want to be sure that no, never again will they be attacked uh, from Gaza. And, the, uh, and, and Hamas and the Palestinian people and government uh, also want uh, all their prisoners released and the guarantee that never again okay. will Israel place them under siege. So these are many, many issues that come together. Uh, yeah, Rami, I mean, given the terrible death and destruction we see every day in Gaza, it does beg the question, though, then, what is Israel's priority in this war? Is it to punish and kill the civilians in Gaza or is it to get the captives out? Most people think that their ultimate objective is to drive the Palestinians out of Palestine, not just Gaza, but also the West Bank uh, and, and Drew, East Jerusalem. And they're doing it in many ways, destroying houses, 
refusing permits, scaring people out, uh, choking the economy. They've been doing this for 50, 60 years. Uh, that's the ultimate uh, goal. They want all of Palestine to be under total and uh, only Israeli Jewish rule. That's what the Zionist project is all about. And, and they're pushing in that direction now much more openly than they ever did before. They also did, used to do it surreptitiously. But in the short term, uh, what they want is they want the hostages out and they want their uh, Gaza-Israel border not to be a place uh, that is threatening okay. uh, to Israeli civilians. Rami, uh, the, the sticking point then appears to be that Hamas won't provide this list of the living captives. It insists on an end to the war, while Israel, on the other hand, says even if there is a six-week pause, the war will continue afterwards. So where will the concessions come from, Rami? Well, again, you have many different issues. Uh, the number of, will they give them lists? The first uh, uh, ceasefire, they didn't give a list. They just said there'll be so many people released, uh, women, children. Uh, they, they, but they didn't give a list of names. Uh, so a list is a new demand, and it's not apparently a government demand. It's Netanyahu's own uh, demand that he made at the last minute. There's an issue of how many Palestinian prisoners in Israel will be released for each hostage. There's a question of will this be a, a ceasefire for six weeks, and then the uh, war will the bombing of uh, uh, the genocidal bombing of uh, Gaza will continue. I mean, Hamas has no interest in a brief pause, and then they're re-subjected to this incredible uh, assault um, on them and killing civilians who are lining up to get humanitarian aid. I mean, the barbarity that okay. is coming out of the Israeli state it never ends. Uh, Rami, just a final thought to you. I mean, it was just yesterday that the White House was quite optimistic that, that this framework deal was on the table. Now we have the Vice President, Kamala Harris, calling for an immediate ceasefire. But the U.S., though, Rami, seems powerless in this war, and Washington is becoming even more isolated in its support for Israel. Yes. The U.S. is getting hurt as a nation, as a country in the world. Uh, it is showing itself to be, as it seems to have been for the last... 40, 50 years, pretty much doing whatever Israel wants it to do, with very, very rare exceptions. Uh, third of all, you've got now a historic new development, which is the Palestine issue is a domestic political electoral issue. And what happened in Michigan last week and what might happen next Tuesday on Super Tuesday is a big shock to the, a big scary shock to the Democratic Party that they might lose these swing states and uh, because a bunch of people, not just Arab uh, Americans or Muslim Americans, but African Americans, Hispanic Americans, students, progressive Jews, labor unions, a whole coalition that had always been the core of the Democratic Party is now saying, we're not going to vote for you, Biden, unless you do this immediate uh, ceasefire. So you've got that new element uh, as well. It's a very uh, multidimensional okay. Uh, dynamic, and, and nobody has a single hold on, on the whole thing. Rami Curry, always good to get your thoughts and your analysis. Rami, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Thank you.